Welcome back, Soulful Society, to Soul Full of Wellness, the multi generational podcast brought to you by two functional imperfectionists and certified coaches who deliver tips to live your most authentic, balanced, and anxiety free life. This week's episode is inspired by a June 2nd, 2023, Washington Post article by Robert Stern and Mark Brackett titled, Gaslighting is Emotional Abuse. Here's how to recognize it and stop it. We've been talking about doing a gaslighting episode for a while, so this felt like the universe saying, now it's time. The term gaslighting gets tossed around a lot these days, not always correctly. Gaslighting is an insidious, manipulative, and reality-bending form of emotional abuse. Yet, when gaslighting is in our own relationships, and here I'm speaking from personal experience, many of us struggle to identify it, let alone escape it. In this episode, we'll share some personal anecdotes and experiences as we discuss the essential questions, what is gaslighting? What are the red flags? How do we know if it's happening? What does a gaslighting relationship look like? In today's episode, we're going to go over examples of gaslighting, how to spot it, sometimes the not so obvious red flags, and most importantly, what you can do to set the necessary personal boundaries. So before we get started, Kit, you had a really good insight about gaslighting. Care to share? Based on hearing people call other people out for gaslighting, sometimes I'm thinking, I don't think that's gaslighting. I get that that's not nice behavior and you don't like how that makes you feel, but you can't just label it gaslighting all the time. So I realized it's important to note that gaslighting is emotional abuse, but not all emotional abuse is gaslighting. When it comes to gaslighting, perpetrators use jabs of shame, criticism, and a biggie here, conversation pivots to belittle the victim, to reinstate their own sense of power, and satiate their quest for control. By engaging with the perpetrator, the victim, or the gaslightee, steps into a sort of a gaslight tango, giving over their reality to the perpetrator's distortion. And I can speak from personal experience when I say, you do feel like you're losing your mind. It's good to acknowledge that no matter how strong your mind is, no matter how much personal growth you've done or how how far you've come... Anyone is susceptible to this. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with how smart you are, how confident you are, how strong your sense of center is, is these gaslighters have this crazy, unfortunate talent to be able to essentially make you think you're going crazy by form of manipulation. So just know that as we get into today's episode, Have some self-compassion if you've experienced this. And if you have a loved one that has experienced this, we're glad that you are equipping yourself with the tools to be able to, to share this and spread the good word of how we can minimize manipulation in our life and take our own power back. Thank you so much for saying that, Kaylin. Because when I was in a relationship where I was the victim of these gaslighting techniques, I'll call them, I didn't realize it at the time. And it doesn't mean I'm not intelligent or that I'm not good at interacting with people. It just means the gaslighter was very savvy, was very good at micro-increasing these behaviors little bit by little bit. So I could not recognize it for what it was because each little incremental change eroded my confidence in myself with my understanding of reality. That sounds really dramatic, but it's also really honest. I started to question my memory. I started to question my recall of events and conversations because I 
took what he was saying at face value. And I thought, that's not how I remember it. And then I'd put all this energy behind trying to figure out how he could remember it that way. And I didn't stop and evaluate it to realize he doesn't remember it that way. He's just saying words. I took it at face value that he was legitimately remembering these events or these conversations that way and was trying just so hard to reconcile the two discrepant courses of events. And it was a really good way of distracting me from the root of the issue. So the root of the issue never got discussed or resolved which was the whole point for him. He didn't want to discuss the actual issue because he didn't want to fix or change anything. He liked things just as they were, clearly within his realm of control. Mm-hmm. As long as he was in control, he was good. He was satisfied. So he was using these techniques to dance around the actual issue because addressing it would mean losing control. And possibly needing to make a change himself, which he was absolutely uninterested in doing. Mm. So if I brought up what I perceived as an issue in our relationship that would mean change on both our parts. I mean, it's not just one person, but it would mean some form of compromise. He was very savvy about just rerouting the conversation. And I'm very susceptible to that. (laughs) If you distract me with some off-topic question, I follow right along. Like, I'm on that path with you. And only later do I realize, wait, we never got to discuss my thing. Mm. It's, I mean, it's fun for us when we get on conversations in ADHD tangents, but not in the case of right. really standing within your power and, and holding your argument. But But that's the thing about gaslighting, is you're not given a safe space or an opportunity. Mm-hmm to have your say, or to express yourself, let alone, you know, staying on topic. Quite the contrary, it's designed to prevent those exact things. First of all, thank you for sharing, Kit. I love you so much. It really angers me to the depths of my soul to know that this is something that you've gone through in your life. Thank you. And I know you've come at it on the other side even stronger and more in your personal power because that's how you show up in your day to day. And I think that that is honestly an inspiration that you can set that example where just because this happens to you or you're a victim of something doesn't mean you can't come out of it stronger and also more powerful, more aware so that you can see this in the future because often we don't know when it's happening to us in the moment. Absolutely true. I do think that I've learned and grown from that whole relationship and Mm -hmm. these instances. It was a really long relationship. So this was about 12 years of my life that I was involved in this relationship and subjected increasingly over time to these behaviors, which did erode my belief in self. But with the help of a therapist and with some coaching and work on my own, I've really grown from this. And I feel better, stronger, more equipped in my interpersonal skills, more equipped as a coach. I wasn't a coach then, but going through the process of our certification uncovered even more things that I hadn't realized before. And I feel like it was for a larger purpose, the purpose being allowing me to help others and facilitate growth and healing and recovery in others so they too can come out stronger. Go off, queen. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Makes my heart so happy. So before we jump into the red flags to watch out for, let's go over just a few um, examples of of behaviors that you might be displaying or your loved one might be displaying who's going through this, who's being gaslit. So we'll just give you as the example, right? You might second guess yourself. You might feel confused or crazy. Yes. Am I wrong? I have a very clear memory and I know this is how the conversation went. I absolutely remember it so clearly in my mind, but you're saying something very different. So where's the disconnect? Like, Did I dream it? Am I remembering wrong? I wish, I can't tell you how many times I thought, 
we need to install video cameras that are just constantly going because I don't know when any of these conversations are going to happen. There were so many times that I thought, I wish there was just some documentation that we could go to the videotape and just see this impartial, this is how it actually happened. Because if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I want to know that it's worse to think I'm not wrong, but also not really be sure. Can you describe a little bit about how you were feeling in these moments and and what your thought process was? when you were made to feel crazy? I would say that the number one overriding emotion was confusion. Because here's a person I trust and I love and who loves me back and we've committed to each other. So there can't be some nefarious reason he's trying to make me feel like I'm crazy. That was my belief system. And with that as the foundation of what I was thinking, there's just this confusion. A conversation happened. How can two people remember it so differently? When you say I said words and you're direct quoting me and I do not remember those words. That is simply not how the conversation went. And I'm sitting there trying so hard to reconcile it and think, what did I say that he could even have heard that? What part of the conversation is he even talking about? Sometimes it was that I didn't even remember that being a topic of discussion, or certainly that wasn't my viewpoint. And it was really hard for me when it was, you said this, and I'm thinking, why would I say that? I don't even think that. So why would I say it? And then underlying the confusion was frustration with how can we ever come to an understanding when we're coming from two totally different memories and not having the emotional skill base to use some of the strategies we're going to get into in this episode. For example, saying, time out. I need a moment to think clearly. So for me, if I had just known to say, time out, I need a few minutes to process. I think that would have gone a long way. But the gaslighter, and I've since learned this is typical gaslighting, they don't want you to have clarity. They don't want you to have the time to be able to process and articulate. So they're keeping you on your toes with this pinball of changing topics or changing roots of the conversation. So if it felt like I was getting somewhere and articulating my feelings or my understanding, the rug would get pulled out from under me because he would just change the course and I would follow. I'd be like, okay, we're talking about this now. Sure. What was the turning point for you? Everybody needs a bottom line. This is something I've learned subsequently. It was one of those top 10 life moments that was a very small moment, but that changed the whole course of my life. A very good friend of mine, Lexi, said to me one day, what's your bottom line? And I thought about it. And I eventually came back with, I don't know because I never set one because I never thought I'd need to. But whatever my bottom line is, this is below it. And that changed everything for me. That was the beginning of me understanding I needed to exit this relationship. Okay, so that's a really good question that you can ask yourself if you feel like This pattern has been going on for too long, frankly. What is my bottom line? I highly recommend asking yourself that in any relationship before you need it. Mm. I think there's great value because now I've spent 20 years of my life since this happened realizing that if I know the bottom line, it's going to go a long way toward not letting any relationship, friendship, work, romantic, ever get too close to it because I know where it is and I see when we're getting close and I can make changes in advance. Mm, That's beautiful. It's like a pause to reflect and also be conscious when entering a relationship or when observing really negative behavioral patterns. Mm -hmm. So before we get into the tools and strategy, which I know we promised you guys a while back, but these these conversations are so important, especially the examples um, before we get into what to do. So here are a few tactics and tools 
that are gaslighting because we do we we want to be sure to define it as it's being thrown out there a lot on reality TV on the internet. All right, so denial that never happened. Shifting blame, so it's all your fault or mm-hmm. how, you know they're speaking a lot of you language. You do this, you do that. Minimizing your feelings. So you're overreacting or you're acting crazy or like it's not a big deal. Yeah, calm down. This isn't a big deal. It's mm-hmm. like, well, it feels like a big deal to me. But th- as the guest lady, you're like, oh, okay, wait, maybe, maybe it's not a big deal. Speaking of making you feel confused and sort of rewriting history, countering. So you never remember things correctly or your memory's not that good. Yeah, especially in high emotion situations. Agreed. So that rewriting history, like you did X, Y, and Z withholding. So I don't know what you're talking about, or maybe stonewalling you in conversation, deflecting. What about the time that you did this? What about the time that you did that? So like rerouting the conversation and then deflecting and putting it on you. So turning the tables on you again. And then lastly, using loving words as weapons. So this can be very manipulative. I would never hurt you on purpose. I have your best interest at heart. And this is also obviously in the context of being gaslit. This isn't just someone telling you one time you're overreacting or right. trust me, I would never hurt you. And it's very effective to use those loving words as a control mechanism because it's what the gaslight tea believes. So you're confirming what we not only hope to be true, but what we believe to be true and what we tell ourselves when we don't like how it feels and when we don't like the behaviors. When the gaslighter says, why would I do that? I love you. I remember thinking, you're right. Of course you do. I don't know. I guess I'm being ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know. Why would you do that? There is no reason. So I guess you wouldn't. Should we hop into these red flags and what to do about them? Definitely. Okay, first up. So opt out of the power struggle. So when the conversation becomes sort of this like tug of war, opt out. So a helpful thing to note is identify when the conversation is no longer really about you and your partner instead veers it into a controlling territory so that you can avoid these triggers. When it becomes clear the conversation is going nowhere, stop all this emotional energy, like all this really negative emotional energy inside me in these instances, I wish I had just said, time out, I need to go think, or I need to go journal, or I need to go process, whatever it is. Yeah. We can talk later, or we can talk tomorrow. But I think part of the pattern was just wearing me down, keeping it going, keeping it going, keeping it going. And I know I was thinking, Well, if you're in it, then I'm in it. If you want to keep going, it means you care about our relationship and you value it and you want to resolve this. So I'm going to do that too. Not seeing it for what it was, that ultimate control of just wearing me down. The person was not emotionally invested in the way I was. So it was a big emotional expenditure for me, not so much for him. This goes in perfectly to the second strategy, which is honor your emotions. So check in with your feelings often. If you're starting to feel confused, really negative, triggered, Mm -hmm. opt out, and recognize your emotions and their patterns. So um, emotions are obviously, they're vital pieces of data that guide the decisions we make or we don't make. Set that boundary, pause, walk away, opt out. It honors your emotions and reconnects you to you and, and not their reality. It allows you to, to tap into yourself, your emotions. How am I feeling? Because during this conversation, he or she is trying to steer it, manipulate, gain the power and control. If you opt out, if you pause, check in with yourself and your emotions, you can then get back to center or at least, you know, work your way back to center. I think a timeout can be helpful in so many situations because words can always be said later. They cannot be unsaid. So even outside of a gaslighting situation, in the heat of anger or an emotional conflict, being able to say, time out, let's regroup in a bit, so that you don't say hurtful words, but especially in the gaslighting situation, 
to just realize the conversation can always be had. It can be had in a few hours, in a few days, but what you go through as somebody being subjected to this takes years to undo that damage. Strategy number three, turn on your decision making. So stepping into that self-efficacy, choice, action, Trusting your inner voice can be really hard, especially if you are in a relationship where you're the victim of gaslighting. So I'm not going to go as far to say it's just trust yourself and tap into your intuition. That's not a reality in most cases. That's not likely. And that's okay. So being mindful of your everyday decisions can be really good practice for this. So for each decision, notice if it boosts your sense of agency. That's really the goal here is returning back to yourself and your sense of agency and your sense of choice and turning on your reality. So use that information to build your self-confidence. Like, am I turning on my sense of agency? Just little decisions for yourself. It's empowering. Yeah, I love that. I think it's so important to remember who you are. And if you're not feeling in touch with that person, that's a major sign this may well not be the relationship for you. And believe me, I understand how scary it is to even think that. Remember who you are and who you want to be. And if you are in a relationship that's preventing you from being that person, something is fundamentally flawed there. Definitely. Skipping ahead to tool six. So let's let's dive into that one. It's taking steps towards self-agency. Like you have a future beyond this relationship. And like you said, Kit, you can speak to it from personal experience, as scary as that realization is, and that realization and that fear could keep us in a relationship or a situation longer than we want to be in it because of that fear. We can still walk in the direction of people and opportunities that revitalize your sense of self, peace and joy, and like continuing to invest in those positive relationships and those people who show you what is possible on the other side. On your journey, like it's so important to practice Mm self-compassion. It really is the most vital tool, I think, in my toolkit. Couple self-compassion with belief in self. Who I am in a relationship should be an enhancement of who I am because who I am, period, is more than good enough. Amen. If the relationship leaves me less, that's not a relationship I should be in. If the relationship allows me to be more, that's a bonus. As scary as it can feel to think about leaving a relationship, it is always an option. Know that about yourself. You are going to be just fine all by yourself. You don't need anyone else. Brings us to our next strategy. Be willing to leave even if you ultimately don't have to. If you know your bottom line, what are you quite simply not going to put up with? Then you can be sure to stay comfortably far from that bottom line. Then you're in the relationship because you want to be, not because you feel like you have to be or you're stuck or you don't feel like you have an option. Yeah, if you've tried to make the relationship work and still find yourself on the end of emotionally harmful or abusive behaviors, you are worthy of walking away. Backing up to tool number four, which we also skip, but fits in nicely in this order too. (laughs) Find your support system. Absolutely. Whether you're staying or leaving the relationship, your support system is essential. Find your peeps. When you feel like you might be losing your mind, Your support system will reground you. They know you. They love you. They're always there for you. Mm. And they can really help bring you back to who you are. I find that like when I'm with people that I deeply care about, family, like long-term friends, it reroutes me and regrounds me in who I actually am. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. We hope you learned a few helpful strategies and tools and red flags to watch out for and to help your family and friends watch out for when it comes to gaslighting. We hope it's been defined a little bit more clearly for you. If you've got any questions, suggestions, feel free to shoot them over to our email at sfowpodcast at gmail.com. 
We'd love if you shared this episode with a friend or a loved one you think would be interested in learning a little more about what gaslighting really is. Thank you so much for listening. We love you so much. Peace, love, and light. Peace, love, and light. The Soulful of Wellness hosts are certified health and wellness coaches. This podcast is intended to inform and entertain listeners on their wellness journey. This podcast is meant to enhance, not replace, listeners' care from doctors, therapists, or other medical providers. Soulful.